hi guys so this video is going to be different i didn't want to come on here and do the same type of video like a styling haul with what's going on um and if you don't know what's going on um an african-american man by the name of george floyd was killed by the police and i really think it's important that we discuss racism here on my channel even though you guys might feel uncomfortable and not want to listen to it i think that a lot of people believe that racism no longer exists and um this generation is just they just want to be activists or they just want something to complain about i thought the best way to show you that it does exist is to just share my experiences with racism with you and i don't even really talk about my experiences usually because no one ever asks so i never do the only people that really i talk about it with is my family but no one has ever really asked me hey do you deal with racism I'm going to share with you my most recent experience. I've been discriminated against because of the color of my skin my entire life. Okay, my entire life. So it started when I was young, has continued until this day. So as you guys know, I'm a, I'm a lawyer. 2019, I was working at a different firm, different law firm. And so me and my coworkers, we were hanging out. It was around 12, so we were all getting ready for lunch, basically. And so we were deciding on a place to go and eat. And so we decided to take a vote where we should go. And keep in mind, my coworkers, we're all, we're all attorneys, okay? So I casted my vote, and one of the attorneys said out loud, aren't you three-fifths of a person? Well, your vote doesn't count. 2019 okay i don't know about you guys but my friends don't say things like that like normal people don't say things like that if you guys aren't aware of what that meaning has back in the day the way slaves were counted they were told that they were three-fifths of a person that's how slaves were referred to this is what a lawyer told me in 2019 last last year needless to say i quit okay i quit and i moved on because and i didn't escalate it because uh this particular person was in a high position nothing was going to happen nothing was going to happen and i knew they would just make my life harder so i decided to go ahead and remove myself but if that was said to somebody who was like really struggled like that could have had a lot of seriously serious implications and it's and it does it's sad because this this person later moved on to become a really key player in the firm so anyway so that's one experience um another experience so i grew up in victorville california it's a small little area and a lot of it's funny because a lot of people say well of course you experience racism in victorville because it's small and i hate when people say that uh i shouldn't expect to experience racism because i live in a small town and uh, when i left that town to go to college and to go to law school i moved to bigger areas and i still experience racism so it doesn't matter if you're in a small town or a big town wherever it still exists so let me take you back to when i was in high school so of course when i was in high school we had the the stere i had the stereotypical things happen people made fun of me for my lips they made fun of me for my nose they asked if i bled red blood they would say things like i would date a fat girl before i dated a black girl and that's just messed up on two levels but this these are the people that were like around me I remember one story where one of my friends wanted to date this half black girl and like go ahead you know ask her you know go for it and i was like she likes you and he told me my parents would kill me if i dated a black girl so and these were my friends and on top of that half of my friends who told me this because it was multiple guys their parents were our teachers so that's another experience it's it's weird it's weird so then when i was in high school i at that time i was dating somebody and he had given me a promise ring and we were in ap english class and my teacher noticed it and she started talking about it wondering if my parents knew blah 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 
And then at one point, the conversation changed. She said in front of the entire class, I wouldn't allow my kids to date black people because I worry about their children. She went on to quote the Bible. The Bible. She used the Bible to validate her racism and like said it to really impressionable people. I knew she was crazy. Like when she said that shit, I was like, in my head I remember thinking, you are so, you're so, there's something wrong with you. The way that you've allowed yourself to justify your racism with the Bible. Uh, I thought just was just disgusting and and I still think she's disgusting. After that I moved to Irvine. I attended the University of California Irvine for my undergrad and there I had multiple experiences. For example when I was working in Subway because I worked while in college um, like a man got mad at me for not giving his change him his change fast enough and called me the n-word in front of the entire store and repeated it he was like you're a stupid blank and i would became a lawyer so i became a lawyer in 2014 and like you know your first day in court terrified like you're really terrified so i don't remember um if it was my first day but it was definitely within my first year of being a lawyer i was in court and the person who i was against um, I was trying to speak with him, you know, about the case. It's what you usually do, at least in my field in workers' comp. You try to speak, you negotiate, you talk about why you're there, blah, 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 before you go before the judge. Well, when I went before the guy to speak, he was this, like, maybe 60-year-old white guy. And I tried to speak to him, and he was like, you're an uneducated black girl, and I'm not talking to you. Uneducated. Like, first of all, I was like, you're freaking dumb like I have as much education as you because we're both in this courtroom um, he walked off he refused to speak to me I had I was again I was brand new so I didn't know what to do so literally I went before the judge and you're usually not supposed to speak with the judge without the other person present but I couldn't even like get him to talk to me so I went before the judge and I explained the situation. I said, your honor, he's refusing to speak to me. He's not negotiating, he's not doing anything. He's literally walked outside and refuses to talk to me. Like I've never seen this happen ever since I've been an attorney, but the judge stood up, I'll never forget. He walked around where he was sitting. He said, show me where he is. And I literally was like, oh my gosh. So then I took the judge downstairs and we went outside and the judge gave him a piece of his mind and made him come up. I will never forget that judge. I am so appreciative of him. Uh, but it's crazy that he refused to talk to me and the things that he said. And I've had a lot of other experiences. I'm just giving you guys a handful. So I've lived in Victorville, I've lived in Orange County, I've lived in, um, I'm in LA right now. So these, all of these experiences have been everywhere I've gone. So my point of just sharing this with you is to tell you that racism, it exists. Don't disregard somebody's statement when they say they've experienced racism. Don't, don't tell them that their experiences don't count. One last story. I was um, on the volleyball team uh, with, and we, we were at an away game and after we played the coach let us stop at like a CVS or Walgreens I can't remember which one and when we stopped um, the, all the girls got out we all got out but the coach and some of the parents stayed on the bus and we just wanted to get candy and crap like that for the way back for the ride back while we were in line me and my other friend Cherelle who's black and then which you guys have seen on my channel and then another one of our friends um when it was our turn to get ringed up the lady looked at us and she said I refuse you service she took all of our friends who were white when she got to us she refused us service this was in high school we left the store we got back on the bus, we told the coach and the parents, and you know, they, I'm not sure what happened, but the coach and the parents went back in the store. My point of just sharing this with you again is to show you my experiences. Racism exists. It exists no matter what stage 
of your life you're in, what we can do from here. So it's like, we want to make change. So these protests are great, us sharing our experiences are great, but what can we do to make change? And I think to make change, we have to vote, guys. I don't want to see you in these marches and doing all these things and say you're for us, you're with us, and when it's time to vote, you're sitting on your couch eating bonbons. Like, you need to get up, you need to teach yourself in the procedures and processes of voting, you need to educate yourself about who, who's running, who you want to vote for, why you want to vote for them, and you need to be up and ready to vote. Because voting is one of the key things that will make a difference here. So I'm going to link a lot of stuff about voting down below. Please take a look at it. I'll also link some petitions down below. Look at them. Police brutality happens for a lot of reasons. I think it happens because of bad cops, racist cops, and just bad people in general. Some of them are just bad people. So um, I think that we need to change how cops become cops. Like, why did I have to go to school for seven years to be able to defend people in a courtroom and cops can enforce the law and all they need is like a high school degree? We're both dealing with the law here. If anything, theirs is more intense because they can use deadly force. But I had to go to school for seven years. So changes need to be made. I believe the unions really protect police. So I just think we all need to do our research and we all have to vote when the time comes. So I know this is a kind of heavy video, but I wanted to show you guys my experience. I couldn't, I could not do a clothing haul without coming on here and telling you guys how I feel about this situation. So, but I hope everybody's doing okay. I hope everybody's staying safe. And just, you know what, why don't you guys leave a comment down below if you've experienced racism. Because I want my, the people that follow me um, to just have a conversation. If you haven't experienced racism, you can see and hear other people's experiences. So go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.